6. Trouble breathing or shortness of breath when you're active. Shortness of breath, particularly during physical activity, can occur when narrowed arteries limit blood flow to the heart or lungs. In hyperlipidemia, atherosclerosis may affect the coronary arteries supplying blood to the heart or the pulmonary arteries transporting blood to the lungs. Reduced blood flow in these arteries impairs oxygen exchange, making it difficult for the body to meet its oxygen demands during exertion. As a result, individuals may experience breathlessness, chest tightness, or a sensation of being unable to catch their breath while exercising or engaging in strenuous activities. 7. Confusion or trouble speaking. These neurological symptoms can arise if a stroke occurs due to atherosclerosis in the arteries supplying blood to the brain. A stroke, also known as a cerebrovascular accident, occurs when blood flow to a part of the brain is disrupted, either by a blockage, ischemic stroke, or the rupture of a blood vessel, hemorrhagic stroke. When brain tissue is deprived of oxygen and nutrients, it becomes damaged or dies, resulting in neurological deficits such as confusion, difficulty speaking or understanding speech, weakness or paralysis. The specific symptoms experienced depend on the location and extent of the brain injury. 8. Weakness, often in your arm. Weakness, particularly in the arms, can be a consequence of stroke resulting from reduced blood flow to the brain. When a stroke occurs, the affected area of the brain may be unable to send signals to the muscles, leading to weakness or paralysis in specific regions of the body, such as the arms. This weakness may be accompanied by other neurological symptoms, such as numbness, tingling, or loss of coordination. The severity and duration of weakness depend on the size and location of the stroke, as well as the extent of damage to the brain tissue. These physical manifestations, although generally benign, serve as visual indicators of potential underlying health risks associated with hyperlipidemia. Their presence underscores the importance of regular health screenings and proactive management of lipid levels to prevent complications such as cardiovascular disease or strokes. Early detection through lipid panel tests allows for timely intervention and risk reduction emphasizing the significance of heightened awareness and proactive health management in individuals at risk for hyperlipidemia. Prevention. You might be asking yourself, how do I prevent myself from getting too much cholesterol in my blood? Well, preventing hyperlipidemia effectively involves adopting healthier lifestyle habits. Key among these is ceasing smoking due to its adverse effects on lipid levels and heightened cardiovascular disease risk. Reducing saturated fat and alcohol consumption is crucial as both elevate lipid levels. Embracing a diet abundant in fruits, vegetables, and whole grains is beneficial for cholesterol management and overall well-being. Maintaining an optimal weight is vital in preventing hyperlipidemia. Excess weight, especially around the abdomen, correlates with increased LDL, bad cholesterol, and decreased HDL, good cholesterol, levels. A combination of nutritious eating and consistent physical activity can aid in weight loss, there be improving lipid profiles and mitigating hyperlipidemia risk. Screening. Now, let's talk about what you need to do if you suspect having hyperlipidemia. Regular checkups to test for high cholesterol are really important, especially for people with family members who've had it or heart problems. These tests, recommended every few years for adults, measure different types of cholesterol in your blood, like the good and bad kinds. Cholesterol levels are measured in milligrams per deciliter, and normal is less than 200 milligrams per deciliter. If your levels are between 200 and 239 milligrams per deciliter, that's kind of high. And if it's 240 milligrams per deciliter or more, that's really high. Doctors want your bad cholesterol to be low, 
because it can cause a lot of problems as discussed before. Aiming for less than 100 milligrams per deciliter if you're not at high risk and less than 70 milligrams per deciliter if you are. But your good cholesterol needs to be high because it's good for your heart. Aiming for above 40 milligrams per deciliter for men and above 50 milligrams per deciliter for women. Triglycerides, another type of fat in your blood, should be below 150 milligrams per deciliter. By doing these tests, healthcare providers can find out if you're at risk early and help you avoid heart problems down the road. Management strategies. Now, for those diagnosed with hyperlipidemia, do not be frustrated because there are management strategies put in place by competent healthcare providers. Management focuses on healthy weight maintenance through a balanced diet, portion control, and regular exercise. Generally, the following are the measures pivotal in enhancing lipid profiles and minimizing cardiovascular complications. 1. Healthy diet. Adopting a balanced diet with portion control is crucial for managing hyperlipidemia. This involves consuming a variety of nutrient-rich foods, such as fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and lean proteins while limiting saturated fats, trans fats, and cholesterol. Emphasizing foods high in soluble fiber like oats and legumes can help lower LDL cholesterol levels. 2. Regular exercise. Engaging in regular physical activity is essential for improving lipid profiles and overall cardiovascular health. Activities such as brisk walking, jogging, swimming, or cycling for at least 150 minutes per week can raise HDL cholesterol, lower LDL cholesterol, and reduce triglyceride levels. Exercise also promotes weight loss and helps maintain a healthy body weight, which is beneficial for managing hyperlipidemia. 3. Medication In cases where lifestyle changes alone are insufficient, medications like statins may be prescribed to lower cholesterol levels and reduce the risk of cardiovascular events. Statins work by inhibiting the enzyme responsible for cholesterol production in the liver, effectively lowering LDL cholesterol levels. Other medications, such as bile acid sequestrants, fibrates, or PCSK9 inhibitors, may also be used depending on individual health needs and risk factors. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. Remember, knowledge is the first step toward action. If you found this information helpful, check for more on our channel. Until next time, stay informed and stay healthy.